Shalom Yasharada. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechak Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Shalom to all the Akim out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity, and all the Akwaf listening in today. I'm back at you with another lesson entitled The Strangeness of His Salvation. You see, because, um, you know, I'm not too sure if you've um, seen the, the previous video that I uploaded where they shut down the NASA live feed because of, you know, um, extraterrestrial activity, man, that was seen on, on, on uh, one of NASA's cameras, you know, in, the, in, the, um, the sp in space. All right. So, you know, they know something big is coming, man. They know ultimately that Yahweh Shai is coming. As it is written in the scripture, man, they know and they fear the second coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, man. Because, you know, as it is written, he will not meet thee as a man. You know, he's coming as an all-conquering power, all-conquering force, man. As a um, an angelic force that's ready to, you know, kick much ass, for lack of a better word, you see. So... They know exactly what's coming for them, man. You know, many times these um, top people in like the US military have spoken about these UFOs and the threat of them and how, you know, how all um, nations and countries would settle their differences if we had a um, an extraterrestrial threat of the sort, man. So they know what they're fighting against, you see. But the people, they believe that... <laughs> You've got aliens, so-called little green Martian-looking things that travel in these uh, so-called UFOs, man. But these are the chariots of the Lord, all right? We know that the angels travel about, travel about in these chariots. And um, they're coming to do two things, man. One, they're coming to deliver the Lord's elect. And two, they're coming to destroy the wicked, man. And they're coming to destroy this place, you know? So let's start off at, um, in the book of Revelation, chapter 1 verse 7 and it reads behold he cometh with clouds you know and the clouds uh, are basically synonymous to to the chariots man you know to the so-called ufos many times um these chariots they clock themselves in the clouds man you can you can see numerous footage numerous video footage of these ufos um hiding themselves within the clouds all right but you see um, most of the time when the Bible is talking about clouds, it's just really talking about those chariots, man. So-called UFOs. All right. So Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him. So you see in this one, in this one verse, you've uh, it's, it's spoken about the so-called UFOs, which, you know, are the chariots of the Lord. All right. The chariots of our salvation swing low. Sweet chariot. You see, our ancestors, which is us in our past lives, we had more knowledge and understanding than we do now, man. All right? Um, and then it also speaks about reincarnation because it says, and, um, ev and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. So, um, you know, because we, we know those that pierced our Lord, Yahweh Shai, they're not, what, like over 2,000 years old walking the earth now. You know, but um, as it, I believe that's in Exodus 19, around about the fifth verse, fifth verse, you know, um, you're brought back in the third and fourth generation, man. All right. You know, when you die, your your, your spirit goes back to the heavens, goes back to the heavenly father and, and the bodies return to um, the ground, the earth. And then, you know, um, you return back into your fleshly body in the third or fourth generation. All right. So it says, and they also which, um, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, amen. Uh, which means so be it. So, you know, a lot of people are not going to like the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. But even so, so be it. You know, because we, we want to get out of here. That's why we say it about, about which means destroy Babylon, aka America, man, because we pray for the destruction of this place, man, so that we can go back home, so that we can rule in righteousness, 
so we don't have to be in this wicked flesh no more so we can be in our righteous immortal bodies so we can uh inherit the heathens you know man is a we got beautiful things coming for us man you see so all the kindreds of the earth are going to well because of him. Because, you know, as I said, the chariots are coming to do two things. The first thing they're coming to do, um, or one of the things they're coming to do is to deliver the Lord's elect. All right. And then the second thing is uh, to destroy this place. All right. So, you know, and this is basically worst case scenario for these people in the world, man, because, you know, Already these um, so-called UFOs, they have a certain stigma to them, you know. As you know, the people in the world, they believe that so um, um, that green men, marshals, are the ones that be, um, that you know, are dwelling within these um, heavenly vehicles, man. But yet we know that those are the angels, man. The chariots of our salvation, you see. So for, uh, for them to appear and then to destroy them and their wicked society... Man, that's, that's, that's a complete nightmare, man. You know, and they're coming with a fierce, um, a fierce destruction, man. It says in the, uh, in the, in, you know, I believe in the, it says somewhere in the Apocrypha, I don't remember, remember where, that, you know, the chariots were filled with, with, um, much fierce anger and storm. And, you know, they were horrible to look upon, man. So they're going to be horrible to look upon for you heathens, man. You know, those of you that are not in the truth, those of you that don't believe in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you know. Let me see if I can find that man. If it's taken too long, we'll just move on. just gonna move on so lucky but you know um we're gonna go to the book of wisdom of solomon you know you probably know where we're going to already man wisdom of solomon chapter five start the top and it reads then shall the righteous man which is you know that's the elect all right those that believed those that you know heard the voice of Yahweh and followed his ways you know and endured until the end okay then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and have made account of his and and made no account of his labors. You know, wasn't it our people that built up so-called Babylon the Great? I mean, so-called America, aka Babylon the Great. You know, via our way of um, you know, via the um way of vigorous slave labor. Yet, what do we get in return, man? We live in council houses, projects, low living conditions, poor quality food. All right poor educational system and you know so they made no account of our labors man it was the most solomon five and two when they see it they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for you know because um you know other camps like to say the men of gms are you know that that bum camp you know where uh, uh, we're very we're heavily despised, man. Those of us that are the true and sincere followers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, we're heavily despised, man, among all people. So when they see those same men that they despised um, taking part of this great salvation, this drastic, this strange, um, otherworldly salvation. They're going to be amazed, man. Like, wow, 
you know, like these are the same guys that we, we you know, we laughed at, we mocked, we scoffed, we took the piss out of, we doubted, and you know, he's the same one that's being saved from the troubles, from the plagues that are therein, you know? So that's why it says Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 2, when they, when they see it, so when they see those chariots beaming up the elect whilst it's destroying them, all right? And when they see, um, you know, prior to the elect being beamed up in the chariots, when they see them getting busy, um, you know, those that the Heavenly Father bestows that spiritual power on, Lord willing, I be one of those men, man. Lord willing, we be a part of the elect, man. You know, um, when they see when they see the elect getting down and busy with those spiritual powers, you know, Psalms one ten and three, thy people shall be willing in, in the day of thy power, man. You know, they're going to be amazed, man, because, you know, they only see this stuff in the Marvel films or, um, you know, in the animes like Dragon Ball Z or Avatar, you, you name it, man. But they, this is going to be their reality, man. And who who's going to be the ones with the power, man? The ones that, that um, you know, um, the elect, the, the Israelites of the Most High, man, Israel of the Most High. You know, they're going to see um, those same Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans that they had in derision be raised up with that power man those that be a part of the elect and you know they're gonna get busy man jeremiah 51 and 20 thou art my battle axe and weapons of war isaiah 41 you know um what does it say in isaiah 41 man you know thou shalt fresh the mountains and beat them small you know so we're gonna take down um the legislations of this world, man. We're going to take down the, the rulers of this world and, 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 you know, all the wickedness that comes with it, man. All right. Um, there's many scriptures that speak on, 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 on you know, uh, the righteous overthrow and the wicked, man. Daniel 7, 18. That the saints shall take the kingdom. All right. So the Heavenly Father, he's getting ready to, um, to raise up his men. All right. The true men of the Lord is going to raise them up with power and, and, you know, they're going to make up the army of the most high, man. And they're going to be working, um, you know, the Heavenly Father, he's going to show his right hand side, man. Because right now Esau is flexing his left, but the Heavenly Father is going to show um, the, the magnificence, the, the glory of his right hand side, man. And Lord willing, we'd be a part of the elect to be a part of that glory, man. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. You know, so these guys, they didn't think that we had it all together, man. We was laughed at, we was mocked. And, you know, we was we was counted as mad. All right, because, you know, they, they looked to us like, how the hell could you believe in what you're saying, man? That's complete... Um, bullcrap, you know, yet yeah, this is the truth, all right. Verse 4 We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. So, you know, they see us doing the work of the Lord and they think that this is gonna um, have no benefit, man. They, they don't think that we're gonna get any sort of reward from it, man. They just believe that all we're gonna do is just, you know, read the Bible and then die. You know, they don't believe that the Heavenly Father is going to raise up his true men. Okay. That's why it says in verse 5, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 5, How is he numbered amongst the children of the Most High and his lot among the saints? You know, because these guys in the world, you know, uh, the wicked two-thirds of our people, they believe they got it all figured out. You know, all we need to do is call on Jesus Christ, accept him in our heart as our Lord and Savior, and that's it. Don't need to do anything else. We can eat pork. We can we can commit adultery. We can, you know, do all these abominable things, man. You know, we just need to accept Jesus in our heart. And that's not the case, man. So when they see that, you know, those same men that they had in derision, that they laughed at, that they mocked, are the same ones receiving that salvation, they're going to be asking that question, man. Um, How is he numbered amongst the children of the Most High? And his lot among the saints. Okay. Therefore we have erred. 
from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined onto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us, you know, because they're going to realize in that day that they didn't have the truth, man. They didn't have the oil. All right. They didn't have the true understanding, the true understanding of the Bible or they weren't calling on the true, the true God of the Bible, man. You got our people besides calling on Jesus, you know, you got our people calling on Allah, Buddha or just believing in, in, in you know, the universe rather than believing in Yahweh by Hashem, you know. Um, verse 7, we wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yeah, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. You know, so you guys wearied yourselves and, you know, a lot of you are into, uh, uh, you know, uh, psychic readings tarot cards and all that sort of stuff man you wearied in all these different things trying to find a way of the truth and you didn't find it man all right verse 8 what have pride profited us or what have riches with our um vanity brought us sorry what have pride profited profited us or what have riches with our um vaunting brought us you know so you guys are going to realize that you guys have been laboring in vain man you know let's get um let's go to the book of proverbs real quick proverbs chapter 16 we're just going to link up this verse with proverbs 16 and um 18 pride goeth before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fool so, you know, the Heavenly Father, he's going to come at the height of pride, man. You know, when everyone thinks that they got it all figured out. And, you know, ev everything is all good. And they're all prospering. And then, boom, man. That's why it says the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. For those that ain't watching, man. And those of you outside the truth are not watching for the signs. You don't even know the signs, furthermore. Verse 19. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly which is us man you know those in this truth we're the lowly man you know we suffer in this world you know the hopeful elect is being tried like gold in the fire man so you know um things don't always work out the way they want it to be but you know ultimately it's sharpening them man perfecting them for the day of the lord all right so um better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. And you know, handling um, a matter in a prideful state of mind isn't handling a matter wisely, man. All right. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. And whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. So happy are we in this truth, man, because we, we, you know, the Heavenly Father, he shows us every day that um, he's the true living power, man. You know, he, uh, these prophecies are literally popping off the pages, man, whilst the whole world is asleep. You know, so all praises to Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai for opening our eyes to the truth, man. Um, back in Wisdom of Sodom in 5 um, and verse 9. All those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasted by, you know, so your ways of wickedness, all those beliefs that you had, all your false philosophies, they're going to pass away like a shadow, man, you know, and this truth is going to conquer all the lies, okay? Verse 10, and as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, by the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the keel in the waves or when a bird have flown through the air there is no token of her way to be found but the light air being beaten with the stroke of her wings and parted with the violent noise and motion of them is passed through and therein afterwards no sign where she went is to be found or like as when an arrow is shot at, an, at a mark it parteth the air which immediately cometh, to, cometh together again so that a man cannot know where it, where it throw. Even so we, in like manner, as soon as we were born, 
began to draw our end and had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness. And that's exactly what's happened, man. From the time we was born, you know, you've got this devil Esau working overtime, man, to, um, you know, paint this false reality in our head of what the truth is. And through that, he is, um, you know, um, the wicked two thirds of our people and you heathen nations, you've been consumed in your own wickedness, man, because you didn't find the ways of the truth. Verse 14, for the hope of the ungodly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with a tempest and passeth away as the remembrance of a great that tarrieth but a day, of a guest that tarrieth but a day. But the righteous live forevermore, their reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. So you know the Heavenly Father, he's going to look after his elect, man. But you guys who came against the truth are going to be severely perplexed, man. You know, heavily confounded, you see. Because you erred not knowing the ways of righteousness, you know. You didn't believe in the scriptures. You didn't believe what the men of the Lord were, were you know, preaching unto you. So therefore, you know, you're going to get, you're going to have to die the death of the wicked. All right. Um, from there, let's go to the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13. <clears throat> and verse 5. Starting at verse 5. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. All right, so the, um, the multitude of men is talking about you, uh, um, the armies of these heathen nations, man. You know, when um, our Lord Yahweh Shai cracks them clouds, um, with that gigantic fathership and the host of heavens, the, the angels, all right, in their chariots, um, the armies of the world are basically going to try and fight against them, man. All right, which is why you've got these um, ex military men in America, some of them still in the military. There's a specific man, I don't even I don't remember his name, but you know, roughly paraphrasing, he made a statement about how you know. If we had some sort of otherworldly threat, wouldn't we settle our differences as other nations and, you know, come together and fight against it sort of thing? Because they know that our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming, man, with those angels, you see. So, um, let's read that again. Second Ezra 15, um, Second Ezra 13 and 5. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number, from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Now we know our Lord is not coming out of the sea, man. So um, you know, this is parabolic because he's gonna he's gonna um crack them clouds with them chariots, man. You know. He's gonna um manifest into this realm, he's gonna appear into this realm, alright? From the spiritual realm. Verse 6. But I beheld and lo. He had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it, which is going into the Lord's chariot, man. The Lord Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai. But I would have seen the region or place where up the hill was graven and I could not. So that's basically going into how massive um, our Lord Yahweh Shai's chariot uh, was in that vision, man, and is to come. All right, because this prophecy hasn't taken place yet. Verse 8. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. So these are uh, other nations, these armies, when they see the enemy, their enemy, which is going to be our Lord Yahweh Shai and the angels, they're going to be sore afraid, man, because this is going to be like something they've never seen before, man. Already... The armies have had their um, fair share of uh, interaction with these otherworldly beings, all right? These UFOs, so-called UFOs, 
and you know they're able to intercept their signals and intercept interfere with their radio frequencies and communications and so on and so forth man so they already know deep within their heart that they don't stand a chance man all right so let's read that again second edge was 13 and 8 and after this i beheld and lo and they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. So they're still going to fight because the Heavenly Father is going to put the Spirit on them to still fight, man. Alright? Verse 9. And lo, he saw the violence. Um, he saw the violence of the multitude that came. He neither lift up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. And they're speaking about Yahweh Shai. But only I saw that he went out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests and they were all mixed together the blast of fire the flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and said and burnt them up every one so that Upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. That's going into spiritual power, man. So they're saying, so Ezra is saying that he saw our Lord Yahweh Shai basically, um, um, what's the word, man? He basically, he, he's describing, a, um, um, you know, a laser beam, man, which is, you know, what's, what's that laser beam? That's concentrated fire, man. He said he saw that come out of our Lord Yahweh Shai's mouth. He said he didn't have a sword or any instrument of war, man. All he did was, oh, man. We've got to read that again. Second Ezra 13. We're going to start at 9, man. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, you know, the armies of the world, he neither lift up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burnt them up every one so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, man. So he had this flaming breath, this laser beam just come out of his mouth, <sighs> you know, and, and, and boom, that's it. The multitude was no longer to be perceived, man, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid, man. So Edris, he saw this vision, he was like, damn, you know, so... <laughs> You heathens, you, 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 got, you got something coming for you, man. You know, hey, the Heavenly Father is not playing, man. It says the slain of the Lord shall be many. You know, doesn't it say in um, Matthew 10 and 34, Think not that I'm come to bring peace, but rather a sword. You know, you guys have no idea what's coming for you, man. We're going to see in that day. Excuse me. Bear with me a second. Sometimes it's hard to remember all the, the Roman numerals in this Bible, man. But, you know, if I'm having too much trouble. Let me just go to my other Bible. I think I got it. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get um, the Psalms 91, man. Damn. It's lucky. Hold on, I've clearly gone too far. I'll bring it a bit. I think this should be it. Yeah, here we go. All right, so, so 91 in the Roman numerals is XCI. All right, and you know, this Bible is in uh, 
It's in Roman numerals, man. But you know, this one here has got the, the Old Testament, New Testament, and the, um, the Apocrypha, man. You know, this is the, uh, the 1611 edition, Holy Bible, all right? So it's even written in Old English, man. You know, like the spelling's kind of different and stuff. But anyways, uh, getting to the point, I thought we'd die, how about Shemya Shai for, you know, finally revealing where it was. Um, so Psalms 91, and we'll start, we'll start, we'll start at the top. All right. It reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. And my fortress, my power, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. You know, the noise and pestilence going into those nuclear missiles, man. All right. Um, he shall cover thee with the feathers, with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt, shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Wisdom and, knowledge, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Isaiah 33 and 6. Uh, Psalms 91 and 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. Talking about the nuclear missiles. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So we're going to see the reward of the wicked, man. Lord willing, we be a part of that hopeful elect. We're going to see the destruction of those that came up against this truth, all right? Those wicked two-third Israelites that didn't want to hearken unto the word and those of the other nations, man. And Esau Edom, man, who's our main enemy, the so-called white man, all right? Um... Let's jump down to verse 14, Psalms 91 and 14. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he have known my name. So that goes to show you that the names are important, man. And we're calling on the true names of the Heavenly Father in the Paleo-Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, Yahweh, being the name of the Heavenly Father, all right? Which means he is, he exists, all right? Bahashim in the name of Yahweh Shai, which means um, um, he delivers, the deliverer, all right? Because, you know, Yahweh Shai is our Lord and Savior, man, you see? So these names actually do mean something, man. They're not just, just names, all right? Um, verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You know, so that's what we're fighting for, man. We're fighting to be a part of the Heavenly Father's salvation, man. Because we, you know, we, we don't want to die the death of the wicked, man. Because um, we, we read about the plagues that's going to befall this place. And what's coming for the wicked of this, of this place, man. And, you know, it's not good. It's nothing good, man. So... You know, Lord willing, we be a part of that hopeful elect. And, um, you know, may we uh, uh, be a part of the strange enough, the strangeness of his salvation, man. All right. So hopefully this lesson was edifying. And until the next time, I say shalom.